All right, good morning, everybody. If you want to stand, 444 in your hymnal, bringing in the sheaves, the harvest song. Very timely. Do you want to come up here? Do you want to come up here?
hands to the peace over there. Peace, love. Um, peace be with you and also with you. Greet your neighbors and we'll take, we'll do announcements in a few minutes.
find your way back to your seats. Imagine how that teacher lady's back there still talking. She can, she can give orders, but she can't take them very well. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the house of the Lord. We're glad you could be with us this morning. It's a beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. We'll begin with announcements. <clears throat> They're on the back of your bulletins. October 11th, uh, Circle of Concern will meet at noon. And it says, please bring a snack or appetizer. Is there anything else that needs to be mentioned about that? Okay, October 11th. October 14th is the fish fry. That'll be from 4 to 7. Woohoo! Like Am I the only one excited? Right there. Thanks, thanks. Have you given out all your all your to-do, uh, Lori? I'm working on it. I mean, they're probably something for some other people that I need to talk to last week, and I'll be right back. I may see behind him and do to-do list. Uh-oh. Christy? <laughs> All bring desserts. Everyone bring desserts. Include you, Eric. Okay, anything else on the fish fry? All right. Then uh, on October 15th, the Judson Association Women's Fall Conference is at 2 p.m. Um, and they're celebrating 175 years. Well, uh, the con it starts at 2 and admission or the meeting starts at 3. Yeah, so there's two meetings happening at the same time. So there's the, the fall American, conference. yeah, there's the American Baptist Women's Fall Conference that starts at 2. And then the Judson Association General Conference um, starts at 3. And that's the 175 year anniversary. So there will be treat bags for people who attend. To This is a moment where we do um, fellowship with our sister churches. And so there's going to be um, worship, communion, fellowship, and there's going to be a missionary coming and talking about her um, mission work and everything uh, for a chance to support her. So there's some good opportunities if you come. And where is this meeting? Here. Here. Oh. Yeah. Oh, here. So it's not hard to find. No. All right. So the 15th for the Judson Association. And then on October 29th is the church's harvest party. That will be immediately following the service, so please stay, uh, plan to stay and attend that. And we will have an inflatable obstacle course. Inflatable obstacle. So there'll be uh, s some fun. Which means there'll also be the Sharpsville ambulance. We'll be <laughs> so I think I think the lot. deacons need to do some timed races through the obstacle course, and we can make bets to see who wins. Okay. Well, I'm sure that uh, they'll be holding uh, holding this little person up again later, but the newest member of the church is in the very back row. Woohoo! Yay! He's having communion early right now. So, so glad that you could all be with us today. Uh, on the ongoing announcements, uh, please remember the t-shirt orders. If we could get uh, a lot of those turned in, maybe today before the uh, at the end of the service, uh, turn those in to Christy or you. Yeah, either whoever. way. Mm -hmm. uh, if you need more order forms, I believe we ha still have some back in the back. Yep, right by the where you pick up your bulletin. There's there's extras there. T-shirt, t-shirts, sweatshirts, Oxfords, hats, baby stuff. So. Uh, if any of those items uh, suit your fancy, please get it on an order form and get it turned in, and we'll get those coming. Uh, Bible study will be Wednesday. It's at 6.30. Uh, it's in the adult um, Sunday school room. So uh, if you can come for that, we always have a very good time, and, and Mariah teaches us a lot. <laughs> Sends us down rabbit holes we didn't know we could go down. So 
I also don't go through a, some rabbit holes, though. There are some we leave behind. But uh, we, we definitely learn different ways to think about God's Word, and it's, it's wonderful to study that. So if you get a chance, come and join on Wednesday. Uh, we thank Gary for bringing the donuts this morning. Or, or they were, they were, do we have donuts and cupcakes this morning? Yes, there were cu cupcakes made by Stevie and my mother-in-law. So. There's probably some back there, so if anybody needs a quick sugar fix. Oh yeah, there is a little spider ring on top for the. Oh, there are black bats too. I didn't get. I didn't get a cupcake with a black bat on it. I got a spider. If you get a, yeah, if you get a oh. cupcake, look on the top before you just eat it. Bo bit into his bat, is what I just heard. That. Pretty darn close. <laughs> Listed there also are the many different ways you can get a hold of Mariah if there is uh, any pastoral uh, care needs. Uh, so her her contact is always available. She's always available. So if you need Mariah, please do so. Uh, she also has the pastor book club. Those books are in the back. I think there might be two left, maybe in the back. Maybe there's one left, but. You can also order your own as well, but we are going to be reading um, Red Letter Revolution by Shane Claiborne and Tony Campolo. Um, and so we'll, we'll get together November 5th to discuss the book at, since we, we will have already read it. So you'll have a whole month to read the book uh, before we get together and talk about it. And I imagine she will do the same um wonderful prep that she does for this like she does for Sunday or for Bible study so uh, I'm sure it'll be a very worthwhile learning experience uh, so please try to attend that on the 5th are there any other announcements from the floor okay then we will have our happy dollars I can start us out um, I have one from online. Lori Hoback says, happy dollar for Aaron's homecoming number two this weekend. He had a great time. So that's from Lori Hoback online. Um, I photographed a wedding yesterday and Joey was my second shooter for the first time and I was really nervous about it, but he actually did amazing. Congratulations to you. Number one, I'm glad to be back. And two, I got to have coffee with my daughter yesterday. Wonderful. Um, Probably everybody knows this, but this is today officially starts Mariah's birthday month. <laughs> so, <laughs> her birthday is Wednesday. I, I do share it. it with Barb though. Barb, oh, that's you know. sure. Okay, yeah, but it's Barb's, Barb's birthday, birthday month, month as well. So yeah. Oh, and Chris's. So and Chris, happy birthday! Celebrate all of us. So Mariah's is Wednesday. Should we hit the jackpot again? <laughs> well, you gotta tell us. <laughs> this is the luckiest gambler in uh, in the church. I'll at least put it that way. Thank you for donating. Yes. Okay. Ooh, Lenny's so helpful. <clears throat> Judson's team won the sectional, and they'll be playing in the regional this week. Congratulations. Looks like Nano has one. Yeah, my sister is here from Arizona, and I'm so thankful. What? You tell them what you're thankful for. Oh, I'm thankful to be in uh, Indiana. I'm from Arizona, and I'm here visiting my sister Nancy, and came for a school reunion, and thankful for family. And churches. So glad to have you with us this morning. Is it a little bit cooler here than in Arizona? Is it a little bit cooler? Okay. Yeah. 
also thankful for um, hearing from a brother and his wife who live in Oregon, and he's coming to Illinois, where we're originally from, for a class reunion. I think it'll be their 60th, because he's two years younger than we are. I am. And so we're going to plan to meet him at Danville in, in a couple weeks, I think. Yeah. So looking forward to that. <laughs> You're not going to put your happy dollar in? Oh, Eric sorry. tore up Jay's combine yesterday. How was the flight loss? <laughs> and if you can see from the picture, Bailey Gerard had a wedding last night too, and lo and behold, who's playing golf? Greg. So he can't come to church, but he can go to the golf course. So. <laughs> Any other happy dollars? At this time, if you would, let's prepare ourselves for the call to worship. I'm going to do it from over here, everybody, if that's all right. Oh, never mind. My assistant is. is, is Did you need her? No, I'm okay. I was just keeping an eye on my assistant. So um, let's join together in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of today. We thank you that um, as the harvest season is starting, you are protecting our farmers and hand workers. Um, as they get into the fields and that we are all preparing our hearts for the changing season and what that means for us not only in this world but also spiritually help us to prepare for the transformation that you promise to bring God we love you and we thank you for this opportunity to gather together today to worship to learn and to grow in your name we pray amen I'd like to invite our candle lighters up at this time Come forward and I'll have our offering. Father above, uh, we want to
uh, to thank you for all the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your love, for your kindness and your forgiveness. And Lord, we thank you for those who have gathered these tithes and offerings, and we pray that they will be used to further your word and to do your will. Lord, we ask that you open all of our hearts and our minds right now to receive your word and that we take what we learn and that we go out into the world and we proclaim that you are you are God, you are the Father, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. We'd like to invite our kids and kids at heart up front for a message from Nan. Maybe there's a chance we'll get two cute little baby boys together. See, they're both eating. You forget your birthday? In, in next September. Oh, next September. You're a year younger than Chan, or than Ty, Sam. My grandson will be 12. I think he'll be 12. I can't remember. Oh, look, look at these boys. Okay. Look at these boys. Look at here what we got. Just hold him up so everyone can see. What? This is lame. Eric, aren't you going to stand up too and such show part of the football team? <laughs> oh dear, they, they, they are so cute. Kelsey, you ought to come up here too. You, you were the one that did all the work. Come on up, Kelsey. Oh, on the, come on. Oh, well, I can't see. But Pat asked me. Pat asked me, she says, where'd you get those, or she says, your glasses are pretty, and I said, yeah, but I can't see anything of them, so. And if any of you want, want to see old stuff, when, uh, yeah, uh, I can't, my, my mind's not working today very good, but anyway, in at Sharpsville, when the old school, the gym that was there when I went to school, so you know how old it is, and they, um, they made a memorial for it, and out of all the schools in the county, that's the only things left out of them. And they had all the old cheerleaders and all the pictures. If you just want to go back in time, it, it's really worth going over there and seeing them. I, I told them in Sunday school, I said, there was just a whole bunch of old people there, and I was one of them. And but my golly, it, and Pat asked me how long I had been doing this. And does anyone know, I think when Lori and Christy were in school, I was doing it, and that's a long time ago, about 50 years. Can, can you count that high? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, uh, Miss Adams was ha had a Sunday school class, and she was really disturbed because um, Lane was sitting in a chair, and then there was a chair between him and the next boy on this side, and there was a a chair between him and the other boy. And he was in a room full of kids, but he was um, Chinese, and no one wanted to sit by him because he was different. And then Mandy was a Down syndrome, and she was sitting over in the corner by herself, and the uh, girls were just laughing and having a good time, and they didn't pay any attention to Mandy. So Miss Adams gave the, uh, gave the Sunday school bus, and then she gave it with a heavy heart. And so when the kids got ready to leave, she said, uh, next week I want you all to bring a leaf, and we'll put it on the bulletin board. So the next Sunday they all brought their leaves in, and she picked up this one oak leaf, and she says, this is perfect. She says, this is the one I'm going to use, and she put it up on the bulletin board. And Mandy says, I've grown that, and all the kids laughed at and that about broke Mrs. Adams' heart. And so, um, said the other day she picked up and she says, oh, this one's different. I don't think we can use that. And the other kids really could begin to get disturbed because she had something to say about each one of their leaves. Finally, one of the boys said, well, God made all the leaves different. They're supposed to be different. And she looked at him and she says, and God made all people different. 
And just because we're different is no reason we aren't just as important as everyone else. So remember, if someone doesn't have the same color skin you have or the same color hair, then maybe they've got freckles and maybe they've got, you know, they're crippled or something's wrong with them. If we judge them, we're the ones that are disabled, not the people that are disabled. So let's love everyone the way God made us, okay? Dear God, thank you so much for these perfect babies that you have brought into the world this last two months. Help us to guide them to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And God, thank you so much for these kids being so much part of this, of your word. And help us to love everyone we come in contact with this week, even if we are all different. In your holy name we pray, amen. another lesson. Thank you. At this time we'll have our prayer requests. Uh, a list of some of the individuals are there at the bottom. Are there any other names that we need to add or we can take off this week? I had, or we had, two uh, friends pass away. <clears throat> First one is from uh, a friend from Connection Church, Nancy Slavos, uh, family, please, and friends. And her husband had just passed away, oh, maybe a year ago, but yeah, so a lot for the children to go through and grandchildren. And um, we've been praying for my ex beautician and manager of the shop. And she uh, passed away of pancreatic cancer finally. She really fought a good fight <laughs> and had surgeries and radiation and chemo. And, um, so Sharon Bosley, yeah, B-O-S-L-E-Y, that's how it's pronounced. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to put Gary Gallier back on there. He is uh, one that I told a few Sundays ago about having bladder cancer. And he's now going to the Cancer Center in Houston. So, would you, you say his name one more time? Gary Gallier. Thank you. Uh, Harry Kenworthy's son passed away. This was Donna Kenworthy's grandson. Uh, Rick. Thank you. Anyone else? If you would, please bow your heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you now and we ask that your healing hand would be upon these individuals, uh, their families, their friends, the doctors, their caregivers, and uh, if it be thy will. And Lord, we also ask for peace, for hope, for calmness uh, for each of these individuals. And we know that you have the power to heal them if it be thy will, uh, but we also know that you can give them comfort and peace. And for those that have passed on, we. We know that they are beside you and they have no more pain and no more suffering and we are thankful for that. Please be with uh, the entire world, our servicemen and women, and just be with this great nation and continue to let us be one nation under God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I, uh, I missed one online. Lori Hoback said, uh, 
uh, a prayer that the dealership can figure out how to get my car unlocked or that they can somehow find the lost spare key. So uh, I'm sure there's a story behind that, but Lori Hoback is having car problems. If you're listening, Lori, uh, a brick works. Just throw a it brick. in the window. <laughs> get right in there. She works for the company. You'd think she'd know how to do this. <laughs> she's a chemist, I'm, not an electrician. I'm so glad she's listening right now because I bet in about, I don't know, two hours she finds it in the bottom of her purse. <laughs> All right, if you would, please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Our scripture reading for today comes from Psalm 78. This is verses 1 through 4. Listen, my people, to my teaching. Tilt your ears toward the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a proverb. I'll declare riddles from days long gone, ones that we've heard and learned about, ones that our ancestors told us. We won't hide them from their descendants. We'll tell the next generation all about the praise due the Lord and his strength, the wondrous works God has done. are so noisy now, now that they've made them so thin, they just crunch. Okay, Bailey, we're going to see once again. Oh, are the Aquafina ones a little more stable? Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm attempting this. I'm going to fuss with this a minute. While I'm fussing with this, um, can anybody explain to me the story, Remember the Titans? Does anybody remember this movie? Okay, I know that so I've heard some people say they're able. Now, so what's the premise? So, um, in the midst of segregation problems, a school um, uh, desegregates and integrates um, a white school and a black school together, which makes the football team integrated as well, which leads to all kinds of problems of preconceived ideas about the other, the, the person other than themselves. And so in this football camp, they end up wrestling with their own ideas of the other and having to get over that to be able to work well as a team together. Um, and really that brings about, that, that camp brings about some solutions for them to bond and even become strong um, in their connections. But then they go back to school and experience the classroom, uh, the, the streets, and even the field, they continue to have problems with opponents of what the process of desegregation was like at that time. The rewriting of um, 
this con conception that segregation was good, that separate but equal was actually how things went, um, was a difficult thing to undo. And we even still see some of the, the implications of that today. We'll get into that in a little bit. But what's interesting is experiencing um, a rewriting of lessons you learned from your past can be a difficult thing to undo. Last week, we talked about um, Paul starting to give instructions to the Philippians to undo the lessons the imposters of the gospel were sharing and was trying to reframe things so that, they, that the Philippians were not imposters but imitators of Christ. And we um, went through some of our instructions that Paul gave and we're going to keep going with that in a little bit as well. Um, but before we do that, we're going to read, we'll see, haha, <laughs> um, Philippians 2 verses 1 through 13, we are going to read this all as one portion. I invite you to keep it open too, um, either on your phone, in your Bible, there's pew Bibles as well, because um, we're going to look for more instructions from Paul as we read through this together today. But our hope is we can continue the process of rewriting this imposter gospel and finding our own way to imitate Christ rather than imposters. So this is Philippians 2, verses 1 through 13. Again, be listening for instructions that Paul gives um, on how to imitate Christ. Therefore... If there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort in love, any sharing in the Spirit, any sympathy, complete my joy by thinking the same way, having the same love, being united, and agreeing with each other. Don't do anything for selfish purposes, but with humility, think of others as better than yourself. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. Adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, he did not consider being equal with God something to exploit. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a slave and by becoming like human beings. When he found himself in the form of a human, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God highly honored him and gave him a name above all names, so that at the time of Jesus, everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth might bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my loved ones, just as you always obey me, not just when I am present, but even now more while I am away, carry out your own salvation with fear and trembling, God is the one who enables you both to want and to actually live out his good purposes. I like the next few words as well. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. <laughs> Not always an easy thing to <clears throat> accomplish. But <clears throat> so we're going to take some time together to try to identify some of Paul's instructions. Do, do, do. Uh, I realized I was reading and so I didn't move this forward. It's fine. Of course, once I give up, that's when it catches up with me. So let's start out by what, what you heard as instructions from Paul. Does anything stand out to you? in the, the passage we just read. Humility, Humility yes. Okay, we hear humility. Okay, I heard here and here. Living for others. And then what it... What, being like-minded. Woo, that one sounds fun. I will even add unity to that. 
because I think those go together. There was like-mindedness, unity. Sympathetic, yeah. There's still some more. Yes, unity was stressed. And then there were some instructions about behaving like taking on the attitude of Christ. Um, what were those attitude of Christ things? Nothing out of selfish ambition. I'm just going to simplify that with not selfish. Take on the role of slave. Doesn't that sound fun? Yeah, a role of slave. Um, once again, we hear about humility. <clears throat> Obedience even to death. Ooh, more fun. And then he even says, like, um, to be obedient whether I'm watching you or not. This isn't like Santa Claus, you know, um, but that he's expecting accountability and good behavior whether people are watching or not. Right? So obedience is a consistent thing, not something that earns you anything. And then there's this beautiful promise that comes along with this. Um, and the promise is that God's going to help you do these things. Isn't that nice? That all these things are Paul's giving you this instruction on. And then he's like, okay, but don't worry. God's going to help you. You're not going to have to just try to do this on your own struggle, God's going to help you do it. Now here's where we're going to do the fun part. I want us to try to change these words into something that if you were talking to a young person or somebody who's never been part of the church, has never even heard about Jesus or the Bible or Christianity, um, what words you would use to describe to them. So you can't use churchy words, but like average Joe or Jane words. How would we reframe these? Some of these may end up getting lumped together as a result of that, but how would we try to explain these instructions in a fresh way? Not bragging, Not bragging okay? Generosity or, okay. What about this like-mindedness? Work together, follow. Work together? What was the other thing you said? Follow the golden rule. Follow the golden rule. I also think about teamwork, too, um, with that one. Class projects. Yeah, like class projects. Ooh. Any, who are the people that loved group projects? Are there any of you in here? Sometimes. Who hated them? Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. <clears throat> okay. So we've got sympathetic here. Empathy. Empathy. Give a care. Yeah, or compassion. I like that. Yeah. Being aware of the other person's feelings and caring about it. 
Um, so then in this attitude of Christ, we've got not selfish, which I kind of feel like we're starting to, to weave in here. Not selfish, being a slave or being humble and obedience. Are there ways that you would try to reword these? Put other people first. I know, no, not everybody wants to think hard on a, on a weekend. I have heard of the platinum rule, which is to treat others the way they would want to be treated. Oh, the platinum rule, treat others the way they would want to be treated. Well, and, and sometimes we don't treat ourselves nicely, and so the golden rule frequently is like, how good do you, do you care for yourself? but elevate it even more. I'm gonna just write platinum rule here, so treat them. If I can spell platinum, plat. Yeah, we'll call that good, that's close enough. <sighs> the joy of not having spell check. And then I think for this promise, I think about uh, the promise of you've got a support system. Um, Support is there or is present. I think sometimes when we hear churchy words, we have a tough time putting them into common day thought and we just leave them in this warm, fuzzy, religious language. And then it never becomes something that translates into our day. Mm. Relax, God's going to help you. I like that. I'm gonna add the relax on there. Um, we don't have to stress about it because God's going to provide here. Paul's continuing to give these instructions um, and it's important to see he's continuing to undo the imposter message. It's, this is honestly one of those difficult tasks at hand because I think that frequently we struggle to undo things that we don't always um, bring present in our mind or make awareness of, that we still struggle with these same things today. There's still tensions where the church is getting it wrong today, as, a, as an example. Um, like with segregation, there were Christians who did atrocious things in the name of Jesus to support segregation. Um, there's a book, I'm not going in order of my slides right now, Bailey, but there's a book by James Cohn um, called The Cross and the Lynching Tree um, that is hard but beautiful and talks about the um, experience of black Americans and their association with the suffering of Christ in the midst of them experiencing suffering in the United States under um, slavery, uh, segregation, and prejudices. It's beautiful and painful, not for the light of heart, but is a transforming book. I'll show you the cover eventually. Um, but one of the, the other struggles I think about is um, that there are two camps that manage the struggles of um, one topic. And I'm not resolving this topic today, but I'm talking about our behavior. Can we, can we identify that? I'm not talking about the topic, I'm talking about our behavior. We can talk about the topic another day. But Westboro Baptist um, is known for their protests. And I picked a picture that does not have any slurs on it because they do put slurs on there. They get some very crass cards. Bailey, can you help a sister? There we go. Um, okay, so we have um, 
one side of Christianity that protests. Um, and when they protest, they say things like, God is your enemy. The guy's smiling holding that sign. And there's a person, you can't fully see what their sign says, but it says God hates you. This is the message that they are choosing to spread. This is the gospel that they're choosing to spread. Um, you can't see very easily, but they're also standing on American flags that are on the ground because in their mind, um, America is not in an okay place because they're supporting lifestyles that they disagree with. Like I said, we're not talking about the subject, we're talking about the behavior right now, okay? So th these, are, these are their nice signs. They have signs that include slurs and include sexually explicit actions that they're condemning. Okay, and then we have, <clears throat> then we have a different group of protesters who when they find out the first ones are hanging out, they don up angel wings, also known as giant bed sheets, and go stand in front of them so that people can't see these signs of hate. They, they're, they're not making a statement about that themselves being morally more superior than the others, but simply that they are blocking a, mess, a gospel of hate um, from being spewed at other people. Which one do you think would speak more hope and bring people to have, be curious about Jesus? I'm not talking about the topic that they're de debating. I'm talking about their behavior right now. Which behavior would make people curious to know more? The one showing love. The one showing love? Hopefully, right? But when we think about the generations of lessons we have received from others. There are other pictures of the, the first group of protesters where kids are holding signs with slurs on them. Six-year-olds, eight-year-olds, you know, even smaller than that, holding signs that say God hates and fill in the blank of a, of a, a bunch of different slurs. And these little kids are holding these signs. And you think, they, they're inheriting these lessons. We inherit lessons as well. And if you're like me, a traditional Midwestern gal, um, the default is to not ask questions about the lessons we inherit. To just say, my grandma, this is what my grandma taught me and my grandma knew what, what she was talking about. I love my grandma, I don't ask those questions. Or I love my aunt or my Sunday school teacher, we don't ask questions, they knew what they were talking about. I think we're getting there. Yeah, I think, uh, Denny says she likes to think my generation is questioning more, and I think that questions are becoming a spiritual practice. Um, the gift of asking questions, not to make it sound like we are skeptical, but because we want to know. We want to understand, we want it to be our own. Um, and rather than to just default um, pass the plate and accept whatever's on the plate to sit and look and say is this what I want and Paul is um, giving instructions to the Philippians to have them be able to be scrutinizing towards the messages of the imposters of the gospel he's giving instructions and saying okay this is what I want you to to see and to do, does that match with the messages that these imposters are sharing? And when you see in practice, the imposters look more like Westboro than they do a message of love, a message of compassion or empathy. A message, oh, I just realized I misspelled generous. You guys are so nice to not even point that out. Um, 
the, the humbling act of rewriting the lessons of our past is difficult. As I mentioned, um, you know, with Remember the Titans and the story of segregation, at least as a 35 year old, almost 36, that feels like forever ago. Like, oh, that was black and white photos ago, right? But Ruby Bridges is 69. She was one of the Little Rock Nine that went to school and had to be escorted by um, like armed guards so that she could go to school in a the first desegregated school in that area. She's 69. She's younger than my mom. And my, like, when I, barely, right, barely. But that idea that, like, desegregation was not, like, a, multiple generations ago, it's still in arm's reach. Some of you still may have memories of those events happening in the United States. It still and, and in a lot of ways, it still exists. But like the laws that were being passed um, saying like, okay, we gotta treat people equally. Like we gotta, uh, everybody, regardless of their race, their ethnicity, their family heritage, equal citizens under the law, right? And yet we still have struggles, um, even today, of unlearning the evils of that past and how the church as a whole participated in the imposter gospel that defended segregation. In that same way, false teachers um, were spreading an imposter gospel to the Philippians, and Paul was trying to undo that message and help them learn new. And I think there's a reason why community and humility keep getting repeated for, for Paul. Don't hang out in an echo chamber where um, it's only your thoughts, but make sure you have a diverse group to, to give you lots of different perspectives. Um, and humility is also a teachability. Be able to have compassion on the person sitting in front of you to hear their message and allow love to be demonstrated. Our behavior as Christians will change when we become imitators of Christ rather than the imposter gospel. As we inherit lessons, whether it be from the past or from a neighbor, and even the lessons I speak today, I invite you to test them against scripture with the guidance of the spirit. Whatever lessons you hear, make sure that they fit with the, the whole of scripture and that you are invited to challenge these lessons to make sure that they are not imposters, but imitators of Christ. <laughs> it's a heavy thing to ponder. Oh, there was, there, yeah, but you can help, okay. There's the, the cross and the lynching tree. There's James Cone. He has a bunch of other wonderful books in the similar, similar demographic. Um, Bailey, will you hop to the next book picture? Um, Barbara Brown Taylor is an author, a professor, um, and a Christian who writes books that make you uncomfortable. I have one of hers in the back called Learning to Walk in the Dark um, on the pastor library um, thing. But her book, Holy Envy, it talks about the value of interacting with people of different faiths or of different cultural contexts, and how that shouldn't threaten our faith, 
but help us to have solidity in what we believe. That as we get comfortable hanging out with people who are different, that we know better what we believe and are able to get to a space where we can have respect for our differences and um, holy envy even. Relationships with people who are different don't have to end in fights or debates, but they can actually strengthen our relationships with God. The imposter's gospel, not just in Philippians, but today, says that we are supposed to be defenders, to like push away the thoughts of people who disagree with us, our camp versus their camp and to have our armor up. When Jesus was obedient even to death, teaching and being gracious and compassionate even to the soldiers and the people hung on crosses next to him, the ones mocking him as he died, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Imitating Christ looks like loving people regardless of the similarities in beliefs or lifestyle you have. Yes, agape love or God love, big love. And today as we celebrate to commun communion together, we are invited to embody the attitude of Christ to get an attitude of adaptability. Having our moments to receive lessons and to assess them and to see how they imitate Christ or not, but also to lean on God to help us to adjust our attitude. I love that ultimately at the end of all of these instructions from last week and this week that Paul affirms people and says, hey, God's going to help you do these things. God is going to help. God is the one who enables you both to want and to actually live out his good purposes. A beautiful prayer I invite you to practice is, God, help me to want what you want. Because sometimes that has to be step one. I don't even want good stuff for my enemy. I need you to get me to that place first before I can even be nice to them. Before I can even think about putting on an angel costume, I need you to at least make me think, oh, that person deserves kindness. Adjust my attitude adapt so that I can imitate Christ. The communion table is a reminder of that calling. Jesus' obedience all the way to death. And that even that level of obedience is what we're called to as well. To show grace and compassion to even our opponents all the way to death to imitate Christ that far. So I'm going to invite our deacons forward. We're going to bless the elements and uh, remind ourselves of who we imitate and how to imitate. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you so much for the gift of your example. To be able to imitate Christ but we've got some struggles in our way. We've got some baggage. We've got lessons that we need to unlearn. We need to adapt. And God, we ask you to help us let go of the imposter's gospel and imitate Christ. Help us to want what you want. Amen. I'd like to invite our deacons forward so that we can prepare our hearts for communion.
And I'm going to ask Chris to bless our elements. Please bow your heads. <clears throat> Heavenly Father above, at this time we are so thankful that you died for us, that your love was so great that you offered up your son, his body and his blood to cover our sins. And Lord, we pray that you will open our hearts, open our minds so that we can always receive the true word, your word, not the imposters. And we are so ever thankful that your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, spoke the words. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. Everyone is invited to participate in communion, even if it's day one of attempting to imitate Christ and rejecting the message of the imposters. I invite you, once I give Jay his stuff, um, to come forward, receive the elements, and take a seat, and we will all take them together. Um, so take this time to process what lessons we may need to let go of so that we can imitate our Savior. Come to the table. the perfect human, 
reminding ourselves we're a work in progress. Imitating Christ isn't going to come naturally overnight. But as we take our time to listen to God helping us to want what he wants, we will be able to do this in remembrance of him. I invite you to join hands with your fellow body of Christ. And so we sing our closing benediction. Foster gospel and imitate Christ, bringing hope to the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us today. <laughs>